All right, welcome fit friends and family and followers of Renewal Fitness Coaching. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure people kind of jump on and off as we go, but I'm going to go ahead and get started to stay on time. So welcome to the second class in the summer series of free educational classes that I am doing on health, nutrition, weight loss, general health, fitness, workouts. Um, this is the second class, and tonight we are going to be talking about how much you should eat, what to eat, and the right diet for you um, in order to lose weight, maintain weight, or gain weight, gain muscle. Um, we will focus a little bit more on weight loss because that is kind of the main thing that people tend to come to me for, but I will touch a little bit on maintenance as well as weight gain. Um, so, before we jump on in, um, I just want to let you know real quick. So first, I am going to be here every Thursday for the next three weeks at 6.30 p.m. Um, these classes will be live. I will take Q&A <clears throat> for whoever is here. And then if you have questions after the fact, you can also leave those. And then I will leave the post up, <coughs> excuse me, um, until Monday, and then they will come down. Um, second thing is... I am going to be doing a class or more of an experience called the oil experience on July 1st at 7 p.m. This is a chance to learn about essential oils and how they can benefit your health, how they can improve kind of common things that we all deal with, um, everything from mental health to emotional health to physical issues. Um, so how in a natural, safe way that you can take care of your body and mind. Um, but at the same time, you get to actually experience them, right? Because so many things are, we're not really spending a lot of time together anymore. So I am going to send out four samples of essential oils to anyone who comes and let it be more of an experience to smell and experience the oils as we learn about them. And then you have them to try after the fact. Um, so this is a $15 class. It's going to be on July 1st at 7 p.m. It'll be about an hour long. Um, so I do need you to RSVP for that. Um, ideally within about a week if you can. It is on my pa my page, my Facebook page. And you will RSVP on my website. So you can also find it there. And the link is also on my Facebook page. But renewalfitcoach.com, when you go to programs and you go to sign up, that's where you'll, you'll find the link to sign up. <clears throat> you can also see a little bit more under the events section. Okay, let's go ahead with this class. <clears throat> to help teach you guys a little something tonight. All right, so <clears throat> we're going to start with talking a little bit about calculating calories. How much should you be eating? Um, this is a very simple topic and yet very complicated <laughs> at the same time. So let's start with the basics. The basic general rule of thumb to know how much you should be eating to stay or hit your goal, stay at or hit your goal, is you want to take in the same amount of calories as you are putting out. Like that would be your maintenance. If you want to stay where you're at, calories in versus calories out. That is your calculation, okay? Um, so it's pretty basic math, right? It's a little bit of just addition and subtraction. Basically, if you want to maintain your weight, you eat the same amount of calories as the energy that you're expending. If you want to gain weight or muscle, you need to eat more calories than the energy you're expending. If you want to lose weight, then you need to eat less calories than the energy you're expending, okay? Not super difficult. Most people have probably heard this before, all about calories in versus calories out, right? So simple, but not. Um, one of the reasons is <clears throat> but it's not so simple as how do you even know how many calories to eat, right? Um, so it's easy enough to say, cool, calories in, calories out, but you also have to know how many calories you should be eating and how many calories you burn per day, right? Um, so that's the little bit more complicated part because it does take, take a little bit of calculation and experimenting because it's hard to get an exact number. The second reason it's a little difficult to figure out the calories in, calories out is because it's not always that simple, okay? So there are other factors at play besides just <clears throat> um, 
what you take in and take out. There are hormonal complications and factors, sleep, stress, various lifestyle factors, <clears throat> and a lot of them do come down to hormones, um, genetic things, and just other kind of weird things that can happen that um, gut health, these can all affect your actual numbers of calories and calories out. These affect your ability to lose weight or to gain weight. So that can complicate things a little bit, okay? So as we go through this and I'm explaining a little bit more, I'm going to basically assume that you are someone who doesn't have major hormonal complications, you're sleeping pretty well, your stress isn't off the charts, your gut health is pretty good, right? So a kind of normal person, um, <clears throat> which is not so normal this day and age, but that those are not factors that are overly complicated, okay? So we're gonna set those aside and say, assuming you are a pretty healthy person, now we can focus on the calories in, calories out calculations. Okay, so what you need to know in order to calculate your calorie intake um, <clears throat> and expenditure is your basal metabolic rate. So this is something that, there's multiple calculations you can do for this and it's going to be very hard to find an exact number unless you are like in a scientific lab being tracked. But one basic thing you can do is go to Google, good old Google and just look up basal metabolic rate calculator or BMR calculator. If you do that, you will find probably a few different variations of calculators where you'll put in like your age, your weight, um, a few other factors, <clears throat> height, and it will give you an estimation of how many calories you burn per day. Um, many of these will also include an activity level. This unfortunately is again more complicated than uh, it'd be nice if it, you know, was simple, um, <clears throat> more complicated than we wish it would be. But you'll, you can enter your um, activity level. Just to note, most people are not going to fall into the high activity level or whatever the highest of that calculator is. Unless you are like a construction worker or a waitress or a nurse and you're running around all day and you're like lifting heavy things and then on top of that you're coming home and you're running five miles and then doing a half hour strength training session or something like that. Like that would be a very active person or a professional triathlete or something. I mean professional athlete. Um, sorry, I'm a triathlete, it's on my brain. Um, <clears throat> so unless you're one of those people, you're probably not gonna fall in the high activity level category, okay? So most people are probably gonna be in the low activity level. And that varies but depending on the app. But so you're gonna put in your activity level, you're gonna figure out your basal metabolic rate approximately, okay? It's not perfect, but it'll give you something to work with. Now from there, um, <clears throat> so you have your basal metabolic rate. If you then add your activity on top of that, um, you can also do this separately. You can just figure out your basal metabolic rate and then from there figure out, okay, how many calories am I burning in a workout per day? Um, how many calories do I spend walking and cleaning and moving and working and all these things, okay? Um, so those will basically come together to help you figure out how many calories you expend per day. And just to clarify, the basal metabolic rate is basically the amount of calories you need to exist. Like in order for your systems to work properly, your organs work properly, if you move like never all day, that's how many calories you would need just to be a functional, healthy human being. Um, so once you have that all figured out, you can figure out then your goal. So you have your basal metabolic rate, your activity level, and then what's your goal? Do you wanna gain weight? Do you wanna lose weight? Do you wanna maintain? Okay. Um, another few ways that you could figure this out, kind of, again, approximation, um, is with something like a watch, like a fitness tracker, a Garmin, some sort of watch that actually tracks your movement throughout the day, because these will give you an estimate of how many calories you burn throughout the day. So it kind of gives you a base level to work with. Okay, so all we're really trying to do is figure out approximate numbers, and then you can work from there and play with numbers, and we'll get more into that. Um, and then of course, someone like me, a health professional, nutritionist, trainer, 
can get a little bit more into this. So we can dive a little bit more specifically into all the factors of your life and try and figure out a little bit more accurate number than you would just get like from an app online. Okay, so that's another way to figure that out. Um, <clears throat> the other thing that makes it a little bit difficult if you're not working with like a trainer um, or a nutritionist is these calculations are not really taking into account your body fat percent, how much muscle mass you have, and the more muscle you have, the more calories you're automatically gonna burn per day. So just keep in mind that that's also a factor. Um, okay, so for example, just to make this a little bit more clear, for me, I went on the other day and I did a little calculation. My basal metabolic rate on one of the calculators, I think it estimated about 1,250 calories. So that's what I would need to burn per day to just exist. Um, when I look at activity level or like at my watch, I'm probably gonna fall more in like the 1,900 to 2,000 calorie burn per day. So that's my basal metabolic rate plus my activity level. So I'm burning somewhere in the 1,900 to 2,000 calorie range per day, give or take. It fluctuates all the time. Some days I'm burning 2,600 calories, some days it's like 1,600. Okay, so it's all over the place, but on average, you just kind of want to look at like your daily average. Okay, so when you have that, take me for instance, if I want to maintain my weight, then I need to eat about 1,900 to 2,000 calories per day, right? If I want to drop some weight, then I'm going to need to drop my calories and I'm going to need to increase my calorie burn. So you can do both or you can do either. Um, but for me, you know, I could add in 100 extra calories of movement, do a little bit longer workout, for instance, um, or I could drop 200 calories from my diet each day and that should help me lose weight. And then vice versa, if I want to gain weight, I just need to increase calories. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so that's the basic premise. Um, one second, let me grab a drink. Okay, now where it can get a little bit more complicated is how many calories should you drop if you're trying to lose weight or how many should you add if you're trying to gain? For the purpose of explanation, I'm just gonna focus on weight loss. So if, if I weigh, um, or I mean if I'm eating 2,000 calories a day, let's say, and I wanna drop five, 10 pounds, then some people will just say drop 500 calories. There you go, because 500 calories over seven days is 3,500 calories and that's one pound of fat, okay? So you can do that, that makes sense. However, I find that typically that is too much at once. So I do not recommend doing massive calorie reductions all at one time because it throws your body off. Your body doesn't really know what's going on. You start to gain water weight sometimes, um, your energy levels wane, your hormones might get a little bit out of whack because your body likes homeostasis. Your body likes to stay the same and be in balance all the time. So when you drastically drop five or 600 calories, it throws things all out of whack, okay? So to stay much healthier um, and to get this done more effectively, what I suggest is you drop maybe 200 calories at a time. Start there. And then what you could also do is increase your movement. So maybe you add one to 200 calories worth of exercise per day that you're not already doing. Now you have a three to 400 calorie deficit without like starving yourself or making your body think you're starting to go into starvation mode, okay? So little bits at a time. You don't need to go super extreme. Again, this is gonna throw off your whole body. Um, the goal really is to eat as much as you possibly can while still getting to your goal, okay? So the goal is not to eat 1200 calories per day. Please do not do this, ladies. Most men won't go that low, but ladies do not eat 1200 calories a day, no matter who you are. That's not the goal, okay? So you want to be able to eat as much food as possible, and don't we all want to do that, while being able to achieve your goal, okay? So small changes are better. So maybe you start with taking 200 calories out and adding one to 200 calories worth of movement. See where that takes you. Do that for two, three, four weeks and see where you land. If you continue, if that's working, if you're losing weight, then keep doing it until you hit a plateau, until you hit that point where you're like, I'm doing all this stuff and I'm not losing weight. Now we can try dropping calories again or increasing your movement more, okay? Then you go from there, see where you get, and you just wanna slowly take 
um, calories away and add in movement until you hit your goal. <clears throat> what you want to be careful about doing this is again, no drastic changes. So I don't want someone to lower their calories to 13 or 1400 in order to get to their goal. Because once you get there, now what do you do? It's not good to be eating 1300 calories a day for the rest of your life, okay? You're gonna have low energy, you're gonna have probably some hormonal issues, it's gonna be hard to maintain muscle mass, you'll probably have issues with your sex drive. There's all kind of issues that are gonna come if you're not eating enough, okay? You need nutrients and fuel in your body. So that's why we want to go slowly and you can kind of add in more movement, play around with the different ways that you're um, cutting out calories or creating more of a calorie deficit, I should say, and then go from there and do it slowly but surely. Please try not to stress out about losing weight super fast. That is not the healthiest way to do it and you're probably not going to lose it long term. Okay? I don't care if you drop 30 pounds, but next year you're right back at the same weight you started. That means what you did did not work. It didn't work. So don't try to do that again and keep doing it over and over the rest of your life. Okay, We're trying to find something that you can maintain for the rest of your life. So that's why you don't want to get down to like 1300 calories because once you get there, now what do you do? Okay, But let's talk about, say you've done that. <clears throat> say you've lost a bunch of weight and now you kind of want to maintain or maybe even lose a little bit more, but you're kind of in a better spot. But now what do you do? Because you don't want to drop down to 1,100 calories or 1,000 calories a day, right? So this is why it's important to move slow and incrementally. And if you are in this position, there's two things you can do. One, one of the best things you can do is not only move more, but do strength training. This is crucial, and for some reason, so many women don't do it, um, or maybe just do body weight and just think, oh, I'll just do cardio and keep moving. That's fine, that might help you. However, when you increase muscle mass, you're going to burn more calories per day. Muscle takes more energy, it requires more fuel, it burns more calories than fat does. So the more muscle you have on your body, the more food you can eat, basically. Um, so if you found yourself in that position where maybe you want to maintain or you actually want to lose some weight or you want to gain some muscle, start doing strength training and trying to build some muscle. And when you do that, you're also actually going to need to probably increase your calories by a bit, primarily probably protein, depending on the type of exercise you're doing, in order to help build and sustain your muscle. Okay. Um, so eventually at some point you should hit that place where you're like okay i feel good so ideally you want to find a place where you like your weight that you're at and how you look and the calories are high enough to give you energy so it's kind of you want to find your happy place basically where you feel good and your calories are probably anywhere from 1500 to 2200 depending on your body uh, your lifestyle your uh, physical activities okay um, so again, this can be a little bit complicated, and in some cases you may have to actually reverse diet. So this is basically where you drop too low, and now you need to get yourself back up to higher calories. There's a way to do this, and it's slow, and it's careful, and methodical, best done with a nutritionist or personal trainer um, who can walk you through this, but you would just basically slowly add in more and more calories to get you up to a healthy amount of food that you're taking in per day, but you don't just jump into it. Just like you don't want to just drastically cut 500 calories. Um, you don't want to just add in 500 calories suddenly because then you're just going to start gaining weight. That's going to mess with your mind and it's going to make your body fluctuate too. Because um, <clears throat> you'll start gaining weight and then you think, you know, you freak out and then think you need to go back to cutting calories. So there's a reverse dieting thing you can do where you kind of slowly add more food in. Now, speaking of this and kind of how to week with your food and your nutrients. In addition to calories, while they matter, they are not the only factor, okay? So your macronutrients, which are carbohydrates, protein, and fat, these can have a big impact on your body composition as well, as well as your weight loss and your muscle gain. So this is something that you will need to experiment with, I would say. 
and also something that you should track, kind of like your calories. Um, this number could be different for everyone. It's going to depend on your goals. It's going to depend on your body type. It's going to depend on your genetics. Um, but I would suggest starting with something like 40% carbs, 30% protein, 30% fat, and see how that does. Now, if you're someone who is naturally tall and lanky, skinny, you have a high metabolism, you'll probably want to eat more carbohydrates. If you're someone who's a little thicker, maybe carries more in your stomach and hips, you have a hard time losing weight, a little bit slower metabolism, you'll probably want to do a little bit less carbohydrates, okay? And then you can play with your protein and fat. Again, these exact numbers are easier to figure out with either a lot of research and experimentation or with the help of a health coach, a nutritionist, someone like me. <laughs> um, to kind of help figure out these numbers and experiment with them. But what I would suggest is that you use a app or a journal, but preferably an app, something like MyFitnessPal or any of the food trackers that are out there. So you can write in an actual food journal, but I like the electronic versions because a lot of them you can uh, download exact foods into your um, food, the stuff that you're recording, you can scan QR codes, you can scan barcodes. So it's not so much writing and figuring out. You can scan something and automatically you get your calories, your protein, your carbs, your fat, your sugar, your micronutrients, all these things. <clears throat> and it'll store it all in your little phone app for you. And then you can see what you're eating and how these things are working for you. <clears throat> so what I like to have people do and what I've done is keep a food journal for maybe at the least a couple of weeks, at the most six months to a year maybe. And, um, but so even somewhere like one to two months is probably a good time frame because what this will do is show you what you're eating, it will show you how many calories you're eating, and it will show you your macronutrient breakdown. And then what you can do is if you're having trouble losing weight or gaining muscles, you can start to play with those. So maybe you try cutting some calories Maybe you try cutting some carbs and adding some protein, or maybe you try adding some carbs and cutting out some fat. So there's different ways that you can play with these things to help you get to your goal and even help you get to your aesthetic. Um, so like I've kind of played with this a little bit where I've found a good place where too many carbohydrates, like a high, high number of carbohydrates, I kind of look fluffier than I would like to. Um, when I do a little bit higher fat and protein, I tend to have a little bit more of a lean look. Um, but if I go too low of carbohydrates, I have low energy and I can't build muscle. And so these are things, unfortunately, um, you have to play with, you have to experiment with. And I think a lot of people have a hard time with this because you want to know what's my number, what do I do, let me do it, and let me see results in two weeks. It doesn't work that way, unfortunately. Um, and these things can change over time. So even if you kind of figure out what works for you, don't feel like you have to be married to it because it could change in six months. Your lifestyle might change. You might switch to a desk job from a you know waitressing job or a stand-up job or something where you're moving all the time and you need to cut your calories and change your macronutrient intake. Um, you might decide to embark on some great athletic endeavor and now you need to increase your calories and your carbs a ton to keep up with your energy expenditure um, for those things. So, you know, and even hormones, age, different things. So you might have to tweak, play around with this over time. Um, so don't feel discouraged by having to experiment and try things. But when, <clears throat> when you do this, try to stick with something for like four to six weeks. You need a time period to see how it affects your body. And then from there, then you can make changes, make small changes, and then again, stick with it for four to six weeks. I did this for like at least two years, and that didn't even include fully like a fitness competition where I had to completely change all my macros and then trying to gain weight, muscle. Um, so I spent tons of time playing with all these numbers and trying different foods. But what it does, even if just for like two weeks, is it helps you figure out what seems to work well for my body. And you'll start to learn um, measurements, amounts of food, types of food that work well for you. So after a while, you start to know what two ounces or three ounces of four ounces of meat looks like. You have a pretty good idea of 
You know, maybe a half cup of rice works for you, or maybe a third cup is better. And you start to figure out those measurements, and after a while, then you don't need to track anymore. Okay, so that's kind of the goal. You don't want to track forever. Um, just enough to help you figure out what food looks like when it's properly measured and portioned out for your needs. Um, so try to do this for a while. Measure all your food, weigh your food, figure out what things look like so that then it's not so difficult, right? So I don't track my food at all anymore. Um, I did it for at least two years and I'm over it. Um, but now it's pretty easy because I learned what types of things work for me and I can pretty intuitively figure out about how much I need to eat. I pay a lot more attention to what my stomach feels like. I go by my gut, am I full, am I stuffed, am I hungry, do I need more food, do I need less food? Um, I'm a lot better at listening to my body in those ways, and so I just eat what I feel like eating, what feels good, and what I know from my previous experience of tracking works well for me. Um, now I know what a proper portion looks like for me. I'm not going to feed myself a full cup of rice because I know that's too much. I know what too much looks like, and I'm not going to eat an eighth cup of rice because I know what too little rice looks like, if that makes sense. Okay. So, I know that's kind of a lot of information and none at all at the same time, but I hope that helps give you a little bit of guidance. So I'm going to try to wrap this up pretty quickly, but what I want to finish with is talking about what types of food to eat slash what is the best diet for you, okay? So there are so many diets out there, I'm not even going to try to go through them all, but I'm going to briefly touch on some of the most popular and then what I would suggest. So, keto, that's a highly popular one right now. Keto is basically very high fat, low protein, low carbs, mostly focused on pretty natural foods. Paleo diet, this has been around for a while. It's focused on mostly unprocessed foods, meat, eggs, fish, veggies, fruit, nuts, seeds, legumes, spices, healthy fats, and avoiding things like sugar, processed food, grains, dairy, uh, legumes. Did I say legumes and what they suggest? I might have messed it up, but legumes are not included. So basically the idea is what did our ancestors eat? They weren't really eating potato chips, right? So we're not going to either. Um, so that's kind of the idea. And then um, alkaline diet. This is one that focuses on more alkaline foods in order to reduce acidic ash or acidic waste in the body. Not a lot of science behind this, um, but it basically focuses on pretty low meat because it's more acidic, low dairy, not a lot of grains or processed food. It focuses more on fruits, vegetables, legumes, nuts, seeds. So it's a little bit more plant-based, you could say. Speaking of plant-based, vegan, vegetarian, slash plant-based diets. These are things that can be everything from no animal products whatsoever to maybe you eat dairy and fish, um, to maybe you eat mostly plant-based foods with a little bit of meat, okay? Um, but generally focused on more natural foods, but not always. A lot of vegan and vegetarians eat a lot of crappy food. Um, it's just more focused on no animal products. Then there's the carnivore diet, which is kind of a newer thing, and it is, or newly popular anyway, and it's the complete opposite. So basically you eat all animal products and very little of anything else. Um, then something like the Mediterranean diet, been around for a long time, pretty popular. It's kind of like the plant-based diet, right? So it's focused on things like fish and maybe things like goat or feta cheese a little bit, healthy oils like olive oil, avocado, whole grains, vegetables, um, olives, um, fruit, things like that. Okay, so what's the best diet for you? What should you eat to lose weight or gain muscle? So, if you look at most of the popular diets out there, these and others included, if you take, set aside things like keto or the carnivore diet, because these are more extreme, right? And I'll get into that in a second. So set those aside, the rest of these diets are pretty much the same. They have their variations, but when you read about most diets, they pretty much all come down to unprocessed foods, taking out sugar and junk, 
um, fast foods, things like that. And they're focused on natural whole foods that just kind of naturally grow from the earth. So vegetables, fruit, whole grains like quinoa, brown rice, barley, oats, things like that, nuts, seeds, various herbs and spices, healthy fats, avocado, oils, things like that. Um, the majority of them really are pretty much saying those same things. Eat beans, eat nuts, eat seeds, eat not too much meat, um, not too much animal products, but some, and that's gonna, that's gonna vary in everything, and that all depends on the person, but they all kinda come down to the same thing, and that will kinda lead me to what I would suggest. What I would suggest, again, depending on the person, is to kind of go the plant-based route. And I don't necessarily mean you need to be vegan or vegetarian, but I would say to focus your foods on vegetables, fruits, grains, beans, healthy fats, legumes, nuts and seeds, and then have some uh, meat, uh, even things like tofu, fish, things like that in there to get more of your protein in, okay? Um, now again, this is going to depend on the person, and everybody is different, so I'm not going to say that everyone has to eat this way, but generally, most science shows that this type of eating has the best long-term health results and the most benefit in preventing disease, okay? There's not as much research on things like a carnivore diet and what that does to you long-term. Um, and things like the keto diet, Keto or Mediterranean, I mean, not Mediterranean, carnivore, I would never recommend those to anyone. Um, unless you're suffering from a specific medical condition, such as epilepsy or potentially cancer or something, there's certain things where depriving the body of some of those carbohydrates can be helpful, but it's not good for long-term success. And it's really hard to do it long-term and to maintain or continue losing weight because most people will drastically lose weight at the beginning and have great results and then hit a point where they kind of plateau and then don't know where to go from there because they can't really take any other foods out of their diet and they're already probably eating less calories and it gets very difficult and as soon as you start adding carbohydrates back into your diet um, and fruit and things like that you're going to gain weight because carbohydrates contain water and they're going to make you gain water weight um, and you're just gonna react to it and that can mess with people's mind. And again, then you typically are gonna have to reverse diet out of it. Um, and that's not across the board. Again, some people may thrive on one of these diets for the rest of their life and have no disease and be great. But most science does not back that up. Um, so what I would suggest that you focus on is whole natural foods. What we talked about last week was swapping out unhealthy man-made foods for God-made natural whole foods. And I'll just kind of reiterate that when you do that, your body processes those foods better. It's easier to digest. Your body can use them very well for energy. It processes them efficiently. And you are going to have a much easier time losing weight than when you're eating processed type foods. Okay, so it's, this is the way that I eat and I don't track my food, I don't track calories. When you're eating fiber rich, nutrient rich foods, it can be hard to overeat them. It's possible, but it's hard and it's far easier to lose weight and maintain weight just eating this way. There's plenty of studies of people showing that when they switch to maybe a vegetarian or a vegan or plant-based diet, that they just lost weight without even trying, okay? So this is a far better way to go than finding a specific diet and saying, I'm gonna follow this diet. Instead, just focus on healthy foods that come from the earth, that have lots of nutrients, that are gonna give your body what they need and you're gonna find it far easier to lose weight. Don't cut out any one food group unless you have a specific reason to do so and primarily medical and you know that it's gonna be safe long-term, okay? Um, so that would be my suggestions for you is that the best diet for you is no diet at all. Just focus on the cleanest, most natural, nutrient-rich foods that you can find. Get enough protein, get enough carbohydrates, get enough fat. 
And if you need help figuring those things out, that is what I am here for. I can help you figure out what enough means and what tends to work for your body. And we can kind of experiment together and see what works so that you don't find yourself in this hole of, Ugh, I need to lose weight still and I don't know where to go now from here. Um, and can help suggest exercise and work out things along the way to help you in that journey and to figure out what types of foods will best help you get to your goals of gaining muscle or running a 5k or whatever it may be okay um, so if you need help with nutrition coaching and figuring all of this out please feel free to reach out to me um, you can message me here directly you can leave a comment or you can go to my website at renewalfitcoach.com Go to programs and you can kind of look through the different programs for nutrition and personal trainer. You can go straight to the sign up page and book a either fitness assessment or a nutrition assessment and that will get us started on figuring out what's going on with your diet, how I can help you. And you can just do a fitness assessment or we can book a series of sessions to help you out long term because really that's what works best. A one time program or diet or meeting can be helpful, but it's not going to help you long term when there's ups and downs and life happens and you gain weight and you lose weight and all these things happen. It's better to work together over a long period of time to figure these things out so that you can maintain it long term. Okay, so I hope that helps. I hope that didn't confuse you more than help you. Um, but if you have any questions on these things, anything that we talked about or things we didn't talk about and there's things you'd like me to cover in future classes or um, whatever. Send me a message or leave a comment down below and I'll make sure to try and get to it in a future class or respond back to you. Um, if you send me a message, I'll definitely get back to you. Um, and then next week, I'll be here again at 630 and we're going to talk about natural solutions for stress and inflammation. Okay, so everything from food and exercise to all other kinds of technologies and other things. So it's not just going to be food and uh, exercise that we're talking about, okay? We're talking about all kinds of natural solutions for stress and inflammation. So hope to see you here next week. Thank you for joining and thank you for watching this if you're watching it after the fact. Um, please go ahead and share this with anyone else who may be interested and I will see you again next week.